Hey guys, welcome back to Sarah's Vegan Kitchen. I hope you're doing well. Today I'm gonna to be showing you my favorite way to cook cauliflower. We're gonna be making this crispy breaded cauliflower, really easy to make. We're actually gonna be cooking it in the air fryer today, but I will also have instructions as to how you can bake them in the oven if you prefer. And these, they're so delicious. You can eat them just as a snack with your favorite dipping sauce, or what we're gonna be doing today is making crispy cauliflower tacos with a chipotle lime crema. And if you used to be a fan of fish tacos like I was, Something about this combination of ingredients just really reminds me of those. So I love making these for dinner, especially when the weather starts getting warm. Today's video is in partnership with Kroger. They are my go-to grocery store. They're where I got all of the ingredients for today's recipes. Kroger always has amazing quality produce, including a great selection of locally grown produce. They have all the pantry staples I need and they have a great selection of vegan friendly products. So I always love shopping there. Thank you to Kroger for sponsoring today's video. And now let's go ahead and dive into our crispy breaded cauliflower top recipe. So our star ingredient today is cauliflower. And for this size recipe, I used about four heaping cups of cauliflower florets, which for me was about half of a large cauliflower. All I did was remove the stem and the leaves. And by the way, you can save these and roast them. You don't have to throw them away. Then cut your cauliflower into florets. You can do whatever size you like. I personally like to make them smaller, just about bite size because the smaller they are, the more surface area for the breading to stick and get nice and crispy. Once you have your cauliflower all cut up and you've measured about four cups of the florets, we're gonna make a really simple batter. I add about one third cup of flour to a large bowl. Then add in about a third a cup of soy milk in my case, or you can use any kind of unsweetened plain plant milk, or in a pinch, you can even use water. Then I'm adding in some onion powder and garlic powder to make it a bit more savory. I'm seasoning it generously with salt and pepper, and you can add in any other spices you like. A little bit of smoked paprika is good. Sometimes I'll add some cumin or chili powder. If you happen to have nutritional yeast in your pantry, that makes a great addition as well. Just feel free to get creative here. Whisk all those ingredients together. You can add in a little bit more liquid or flour as needed. Again, the recipe is super flexible and very forgiving, but what you're looking for is roughly a pancake batter consistency. So once you have achieved that, you're going to add your cauliflower directly into that bowl of batter. And I find a big rubber spatula works well for this, or if you don't mind getting a little messy, you can use your hands to toss your cauliflower and coat them with a the batter. You don't need to cover every last inch of the cauliflower, but just try to distribute the batter evenly. Now set that aside for a moment, and we're gonna set up a breading station. Panko crumbs are my favorite to use for this recipe. Regular breadcrumbs will work, but I find that the panko just gets much crispier. And if you are in need of a gluten-free option, I can usually find rice panko at my local Kroger store. You wanna check for it in the international aisle. You'll add about a cup of panko breadcrumbs to a bowl, season them with salt and pepper, and you're gonna go ahead and toss each of your battered cauliflower florets in those breadcrumbs. It always helps to have a designated wet hand and a dry hand here, one to handle the battered cauliflower and another to scoop the breadcrumbs over and coat them and move them over to a plate or tray. Once all your cauliflower pieces have been breaded, you can see I chose to arrange them on a little baking tray. You could use a plate or you can go ahead and arrange them directly inside your air fryer if you like. I just like to get them all in one layer so that I can give them a nice generous spritz of oil. If you don't have any spray oil, you can also drizzle them with a little bit of oil or even use a pastry brush. This is optional, but it definitely helps the breading crisp up and get nice and evenly golden brown in the air fryer. Now I'm arranging my cauliflower in my air fryer tray. I have a dual basket air fryer, so I'm distributing it between the two. The four cups of cauliflower fit pretty perfectly in my air fryer, but if you have a smaller air fryer or if you've scaled up the recipe, I do recommend working in a few batches so you don't overcrowd the basket, which will make it harder to cook the cauliflower evenly. And I have noticed that different brands of air fryers tend to differ a little, but what works for me is to set mine to 375 degrees and air fry for about 25 minutes. I give the basket a shake every five minutes or so just to keep the cauliflower cooking and browning evenly, but just go ahead and keep an eye on them and pull them out whenever they are nice and golden brown. 
So our crispy breaded cauliflower is all done, but now let's do a little bit of a rewind. I'm gonna show you some toppings I prepared for the tacos a bit earlier that day. Number one, and most importantly, I made this super bomb chipotle cream sauce. I kind of modeled these tacos after fish tacos, which I used to love before going vegan. So I wanted to make a hybrid between tartar sauce and a chipotle crema. For that, I combined equal parts vegan mayonnaise and sour cream. This plant-based sour cream by Simple Truth is my favorite. It tastes great, the texture is good, and it's affordable. Then squeeze in the juice of half of a lime. This is optional, but to give it that tartar sauce kind of flavor, I like to chop up some fresh dill, add that in, and then add in a tablespoon or two of the sauce from a can of chipotle peppers. Alternatively, you can add some chipotle chili powder if you don't have any canned peppers on hand. Then add in a pinch of salt, whisk it all together, give it a taste. You can add extra pepper sauce if you want it to be more spicy. And seriously, this stuff is so addictive. If you're a fan of creamy sauces, you're gonna wanna slather this all over your tacos. Next up, I threw together a pico de gallo. If you prefer, you can just grab a jar of your favorite salsa, but to make this, I combined some fresh chopped tomatoes, some finely diced jalapenos, some minced red onion, fresh chopped cilantro, one minced clove of garlic, and then I seasoned it all with some salt and pepper. And literally just now while editing, I'm realizing that I forgot to add fresh lime juice, which I normally would. And very lastly, I shredded up some green cabbage. I tried to just slice it up as thinly as possible. A really sharp knife definitely helps here. You can also feel free to use lettuce instead. I just feel like the combo of the cabbage and that sauce we just made makes these tacos super reminiscent of fish tacos, which I like. And now we have all our components ready to go. So I heated up a few tortillas in a skillet. You can use corn or flour for these. I have the fajita sized flour tortillas. Pile on some of that crispy breaded cauliflower. Drizzle on our chipotle crema, then top with some shredded cabbage, and finally finish off with our beautiful pico de gallo. And we are done. Let's do a little taste test here. It's so good. The cauliflower is super crispy. The crema is super flavorful and smoky. And I like that the dill gives it a little bit of that tartar sauce flavor. I really like the addition of cabbage. It's just very crisp and refreshing. So I highly recommend trying these. These are definitely gonna be a staple during the warmer months for me. So that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you are interested in trying out this crispy breaded cauliflower recipe, I'll have it in the description box below. Let me know if you try it out. You can tag me in a photo on Instagram. Thanks again to Kroger for sponsoring today's video and supporting the channel. I'll have their website linked down below as well where you can get more seasonal recipe inspiration and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.